Hello everyone, Danky the Luscious Luxio at your service, and welcome to episode 4 of my playthrough of Pokemon Blue version. In this episode, we'll exit Mount Moon and start taking care of business in and around Cerulean City. With that said, let's get going. But the first thing we need to do is choose a fossil. You know, everybody seems to like choosing the Helix fossil because it's faster for speedruns, because you don't have to move an extra tile to grab the other fossil. And the YouTube algorithm likes it when people comment which ones you get. Of course, I could just turn on the spot and get an encounter immediately, so I guess that's kind of funny. But, um, but Grand Theft Spiro is really close to evolving into Firo. I had to find another name for him once he evolves. But I am a rebel. I am picking the dome fossil. Yep. Yep. I chose dome fossil because I like Kabutops. I do prefer Kabutops over Almastar. And we're finally exiting. We're out of the cave. Where the rest of Route 3 is here. Try not to miss anything here. I think I should be able to grab an item somewhere before I jump down. Yes. A TM. Yep. That should do it. Alright. Once we're off this ledge, we can't go back until we have access to cuts. So, we're taking the one-way journey. Welcome to Cerulean City. A cool blue city. We'll immediately start off our business by healing up. And this might be a good time to put away some items in the PC, which is a good thing to do in this game. I don't know how much room there is to put things in the PC, but... I can always put away certain things, like... I can put away the TM. I can put away all my vitamins. And the medicines. Put away the TMs. I'll figure out what to use with them later. This away. Dome fossil is pretty cool, so in case people missed that, I can see that I got that. TM. It's important to store your items so you can have room to pick up more. Okay, I'll keep the escape route because I will need to go through a certain place later on. And now, I do believe we just healed our Pokemon already, so... Because Spearow evolves at level 20, let's go ahead to the route west and take care of those Pokemon for a little bit. So we can level up and be better prepared for the rival fight. Because, like, we either need to go and face the gym leader, or we have to deal with the, wild, the trainers on the route north. And I'd rather get some extra experience before going into the gym. So let's see how much XP we get from these guys. And so we're pure boy. 66, okay. Let's see, how much XP do we need to reach level 20? 708, this will take a little bit. Let's keep running around this grass for a while. Take out every wild Pokemon we see. Also, because this is blue version, Spiro is exclusive to this area. No, no, Sandshrew is exclusive. My bad. It's around 740, uh, 640. I'll just give you estimates for most of those attempts that I can. There's Rattata. It knows how to outspeed with Quick Attack, so that could be frustrating to do with. They're uh, 580. I'm just not gonna round up, I'm just gonna just run out. There's Sandshrew. It could come incredibly handy when we fight Lieutenant Surge. Because it, it gets access to Dig, but... It also has Sand Attack, so we gotta be careful when fighting against Wild Sandshrew. We might have to deal with Sand Attack. 510. That's actually from 500. That's it. Let's 
Yeah, Sentry is exclusive to blue. I forgot. I forgot which one was exclusive to red. And there's the stand attack, but we really missed. Even though Spiro's a flying type, it can still get hit by stand attack. Well, that's a lot of XP. Wow. That's like 370 left to go. So these are about, they're about our level, so good to see. Just a leer. <laughs> There's a crit we didn't need. It's around 300. I think it's around 300. Let me just click one more time to make absolutely sure. 284. We're close. Almost level 20. Just a couple more knockouts should get us there. Like three or four wild Pokemon approximately. And there's a crit, that was helpful. It's like 220. Just a little grinding. Also, but yeah, I, I won't be able to get another member of my team until a little while later. So I've been stuck with just these two for a while because I do have plans for who I'm gonna use. And um, if I wanna spoil anything, it's that Firo will not be on my final team. I'm just using him for now for coverage. Should be very close. One more knockout should do it. No matter what it is. A level 12 or 10? That's a different story. If it went for quick attack, it could have taken a lot of damage there. All right, level 20. That should do it, yep. We are evolving. Firo. How about that for some quick editing skills? Now that we've evolved, let's go ahead and heal and we'll finally go ahead and try to take out our rival. So we can meet the trainers ahead. So we're gonna have to, we have to fight no fewer than like 13 trainers before we reach Bill's cottage. So we're definitely gonna take a lot of time healing back and forth between fights. But we have to immediately start with the rival fight. We're gonna save before we try it just in case things go wrong. Not only that, but there's also this. If I go in this house, Press A on this random tile. There's a hidden rare candy. Always important to grab rare candies when you can. They'll be important at the end of the game. All right, I'm gonna save right here. The moment I start walking north a bit, my rival is going to want to battle. So we're gonna take him out. Also his Charmander will have evolved at this point. All right, here we go. Rival fight number two. All right, Doro, here we go. Yeah, we've got, we got Grand Theft Firo. We're faster, which is a good thing. Pretty good amount of hitting there. Oh, he missed. Oh, so close. It was so close to landing that, getting the knockout. Just be patient here. Oh my gosh, that was a crit. 
I don't think it could have gone any more wrong, because look at this, I missed four times in a row. Five in a row? Six? Seven? Eight? Is this even possible? You know what? Because I lost, I had to restart that fight because that was ridiculous. I missed eight times in a row. Actually, nine. I missed nine times in a row, so I have to redo that fight again. Thank goodness I saved right there. Even with the higher accuracy move, I still couldn't I couldn't get the knockout. So yeah, this is definitely going to take a bit of time. Even though I have the right level to be out faster, to be faster, he does a quick attack, so that does make it an issue. So let's try this again, shall we? It has growls, so I can't really go for Leer. I can only go for just straight up damaging him. Takes three hits, it looks like. Oh my gosh, I keep getting crit. All it takes is one to set. <laughs> this is how it should have gone in the beginning. Okay, Abra. Because Abra has no attacking moves, I can safely use Ivysaur. I could set up with Leech Seed, but all he has is Teleport, so this is literally a free knockout. Oh, it's going to take four hits to knock him out, though. Oh, unless I get a crit like that, that feels good. I can I can probably just go with this on the Rattata. It has quick attack, so it has the ability to go faster than me if it wants to. The fact he didn't go for it though. Now this time I'm gonna use that. Oh, he didn't. I guess his starter isn't evolved yet. I'll use I'll use I'm sorry, last. So he has growls. So I'll just go for the go for the damage. A little bit unlucky. If I can, oh my gosh! If I had only made the hit there. Okay, good. We knocked him out. We won. Managed to win the rival fight in the second go. Okay, because he's done, we should just go heal up again. I think it's interesting that his Charmander hasn't evolved yet, because it evolves at 16, right? I think it evolves at 16, so the fact that he didn't evolve it made the fight a lot more manageable. But anyway, good job. Good job, Firo. You saved me. You deserve some praise for that. And now we will start taking care of the trainers on the Nugget Bridge. It's probably important to save before tr before doing things so you know who you're going into against, because if the first guy has a flying type, we kind of have a problem. So we will save right here before we try this gauntlet of trainers. All right, here we go. All right, time to take care of some trainers. In the no healing run that Johnstone did, the third trainer is actually quite threatening because he has a 70, a level 14 Rattata that has Hyper Fang. So if it wants to, it could really hurt. It could really hurt you if it did, if it was allowed enough time to do it. He's just got. Okay, I just do it like that. Because uh, he's just, uh, can't really poison me because I'm part poison type. All he can do is try to lower his speed, but if he chooses to lower his speed and not actually do damage, and not actually go for hurting moves, then I could probably go an extra fight. Okay, there goes the Weedle. Alright, level 20. 12 levels to evolution. Right, there's one down, four to go, because the rocket run at the end. 
It's all good to go. It pro I don't know if it has Peck or not, but I, I probably will switch if I need to. Yeah, I guess this is move. Oh, that was, that was a good crit. I needed that. Or else it wouldn't have been a three shot. A Nina Ren female cannot poison me. The main problem with Tackle here is that its accuracy is only 95, so there is a chance I can miss, which I may have complained about before. Well, in this case, I can just, I can just do a little bit of that. There we go. Probably best to do it like that. Also, Leech Seed could help to avoid damage ranges. You know, because Pokemon is a game that does have damage ranges. A damage range refers to a, a very small degree of randomness to how much a, an attack does. Like, you can get something called a low roll or a high roll and stuff like that. And, um, you obviously want to avoid low rolls that cause you to run into trouble. And speedrunners often try to optimize speedruns around having the perfect starter that has good initial stats so that you can have the minimum number of possible damage ranges to avoid losing time because of being unlucky. So here's number three. The reason why I couldn't use tackle because like poison resist grass. So here's the Rattata people have been worried about in speedruns. Hyper Fang has a base power of 80. So it's... Oh, it just chose not to go for it. Because Quick Attack can still hurt, but... Okay. Ekans. Also known as what I like to call the Danger Noodle. Oh, he missed. How'd he miss again? There's the land. Surprised it took three hits to land that. I can start getting some health back. That the cost of stealing is. Even with three debuffs to my defense, I, the poison sting barely does any. Alright. And for Zubat, I'll just use my own flyer. So there's a good chance he may try to go for supersonic, so. Of all the times to miss. Okay, I was about to get pretty upset if I lost because of his stupidity like that. Fury attack has an accuracy of 90, so there is obviously the 1 in 10 chance that it doesn't land. Tons of healing and going back, I've noticed, but yeah. Uh, the only... The next time we get a gr good grass stab on Ivysaur is level 27 when it learns Razor Leaf. And we're gonna... We're, that's gonna be our main grass type attack for the remainder of the game. Because Solar Beam being two turns is too unreliable to be considered useful. So it's time for number four. Yeah, it's always good to heal between fights again, just to avoid, like, nonsense. And we're slowly but steadily getting some levels here, so it's good to see that. Okay. Let's go back. Somewhere around. This is a three hit. Yeah, it's a three shot. And there's my five percent. Okay, good. Oh my goodness. There's the five percent miss I talked about. Level 21. Good. And female. Let's go stick around. I should probably use see, but. Oh, that was a good crit, too. Seed. 
Gotta suck away some HP as I can. Get two HP back for each time it steps away. Yeah, slowly but surely, we're chipping away at the HP of the opponent. Okay, there goes the last. It just never it never hurts to always heal between fights. Like even if it takes longer in time, it's just it's just better to have more options, you know. Now speedrunners like to keep their health low in the red because red bar makes it so that a lot of things are faster in battle. But I am more concerned about just surviving, you know. At least I'm not nuzlocke in this game because there's so many reasons that you could end up with a dead game, a dead run. Two trainers left, including the Rocket Grunt. Fighters number five. This episode might be a little bit of a longer one, because I'm just going to end it once I get to all of the... I just might include all of the trainers on the route ahead. Like, every single one. This train has got a Mankey. A little bit of a chunk of damage there. So if I land this, it should be a, a victory. Should knock him out. Yep. Lead Seed does help to avoid damage ranges. Okay, that's just the one guy. No exploits this run, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it normally. If you're desperate, you could do this exploit, but I don't want to bother. They did fix it in yellow, but... Make you an offer you can't refuse. I know that's a reference to a certain film. I forgot exactly which one, though. Forgot which film it was. Oh, well. Okay, here is our first rapper. Rap is a very obnoxious move in Generation 1. Because when you get hit by it, you can do literally nothing for two to five turns. It's impossible to do anything. You can't escape. You can't attack. You just have to wait for him to go through. Uh, I think at this level, Zubat might have wing attack. I forgot exactly what level he learns it, though. I've lost track, personally. Okay. Good. I got the knockout. We can proceed forwards. Fight. More trainers? How about you? Junior trainer male, I think. Yep. Rattata. It's Rattata. Oh wow, I actually one-shot the Rattata. It's a danger noodle. Another danger noodle. At least he didn't go for rap this time. Okay, it's no big deal for poison sting. I could just go ahead and Okay, we got him. Trainer down. Item here. TM45. And now there's another bunch of trainers ahead. Now we're on Route 5. Starting with you! It's probably a hiker that has some Geodudes. So that means it should be very easy to take care of them. Let's go on my chop to start. I do like the Machop line, it's just a little unfortunate that it's pretty mediocre in Generation 1. Even though it's the best fighting type, it doesn't really mean much. 
Oh, poison powder. Honestly, I probably should get rid of Growl because it is a pretty stupid move. So that's probably a good idea for the best that I do that. There's the Geo dude I was expecting to see. That's more like it. Notice that Vine Whip only has 10 power points. That's pretty weak for a very basic. That's pretty low for a very basic move. I can't even try one more guy. What about this guy? Yeah, there's plenty of trainers like on Route 5. Tons of Rattata everywhere. I'm just going to move this here so I can move one instead of three to use the move. Oh, so close to the one shot. I definitely need levels where I can get them. Okay, Spiro is getting. His Spiro is behind me, so I can just catch up. Got his own pack. I did not need that crit necessarily. 21. But now we'll go heal. Back in Cerulean. It's a nice little journey to go up and down this bridge. Close to the end of the route, so let's go and heal our team up for this one last few of trainers. There's like five more ahead, approximately, maybe six. I lost track. It's been a while since I've been on this route, so it makes it work. It's also been a little while since I saved my game, so let's quickly do that. Just to make sure I don't end up with like a crash or whatever. All right, we're all saved up. All right, you, you're next. He's about as strong as Brock. Maybe a little bit more, because it's Onyx level 17 instead of 14. Fine, I should still make short work of it, though. Yep. Should be a lot of XP. Yep. 393. It's gonna mount. I'll be going there soon enough. Another youngster. Oh, this is our first encounter with a water type that a trainer owns. Water psychic, this thing is. Because it has a it has confusion, so it can hit us for stab just like how we can hit it for stab. I thought I could knock him out. Thought I could. <laughs> and that would have it would have been it if I didn't got the crit to turn to go. This trainer. But yeah, our team is coming along nicely, just getting a little bit of extra levels here and there. Peter and male. I'm glad I seeded it because it'll probably it would have been a probable damage range if I didn't. Yeah, it was definitely would have been a damage range. 
I've learned not to trust it when it's yellow, because it could still... Because the the yellow could still mean, like, like thir you saw that I had 32 HP when my max was 61. Even though that's well over half, it was still a yellow bar, so I can't trust it. Unfortunately, this is also a three shot, so this is going to take too long to... Okay, I need to use three tackles on it. No, it has its own tackle. See, look, there it is again. The yellow is still, it's more than halfway, but still shows it as yellow. It's okay, like, hey, him next. We're very close to the end of this area, so maybe I can just take care of the rest of them here. Oh, he's got four Pokemon. All the Geo dudes, they'll probably just they'll just get whipped to to nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if I got a level from this trainer alone, because he's got four Pokemon and they all trainer X trainer Pokemon give a decent amount of XP. Karate Chop has a high crit ratio. Three Geodudes and a Machop. What did I say? <laughs> I called it. I called that I was going to get a level. I knew it. You know, I'm just going to take one last safety heal, and then we shall be able to visit Bill. Yeah, just, just... Uh, I guess while I'm currently walking to and from the Pokemon Center, I could just put a little miniature updates of stuff. So, yeah, it's, my job has been giving me a lot less hours recently, so, but I have been valued as quite a bit by the company. Perhaps that would be an interesting thing to talk, interesting thing to talk about for a discussion video later on, but, um, but yeah, speaking of discussions, um, I do have my one that I want to talk about close to or a little after Christmas. I could have that be a interesting filler between LP episodes. And in addition, we could also... I might also have the desire to make more of these YouTube shorts like I showed with my cat because it got it just seemed to explode overnight. It already has over 200 views and I just did it because I thought it was cute. Apparently everyone seems to agree, which is why I probably got the views it did. If you wanted to see me make more shorts on my cat, I could definitely do it because like everybody likes cats and yeah. The reason why I'm stepping to this specific tile to fight this trainer is that he leaves this gap behind, so I don't have to use Cut to reach the item behind it. It's kind of cool that you can take advantage of their trainer's movement ranges to get behind them to reach places you, you normally couldn't without doing that. It's kind of cool if you do it like this. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Got a danger noodle. Oh yeah. Oh yes. I love it when that happens. Gen 1 is really interesting with the crits and the multi-hit moves. If on a multi-hit move, your first hit is a crit, then every hit is a crit. Rather than being checked individually like in later games. There's one last trainer. No, two last trainers. Two more trainers, and then we'll be able to visit Bill and get his his task done. Another danger noodle. Dang it! Oh, and then we're just gonna fall prey to rap. So let's hope his rap is a short one.
it's like nearly a five turn. Okay, we got Sand Shrew. We were used to finding a couple of these on the route previous. Oh, I need I need a three hit if I want to make sure it knocks out, unless I get a crit. No! Oh, there's our crit! That's what we needed! <laughs> That's it. One last trainer, and then we can finally visit Bill. Should make quick work of the, port the grass type. Pidgey. Not quite a one shot. That's because I haven't been focusing too much on getting Grand Theft's light level up a bit. Another Oddish. Level 22! Excellent! Alright. There's Bill, in here. Who would have guessed that he would have predicted Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? can access the SSN in Vermilion City. Because we visited Bill, we don't necessarily need to fight Misty right away, but it makes sense if we do, because it just makes logical sense to beat them in order. Just check in the water, see if there's anything there. Well, with this, we can make our victory lap. Take our victory lap back down to the town. I'm not exactly what those cylinders are supposed to represent to be walls in this game, but I'm not one to judge. Alright, Cerulean, once again. Yep, you see the officer there moved, so now we can go back there and speak with and battle the grunt behind the house, but I think that's what we will do next episode. At this point, we have taken care of a lot of trainers, and I mean a lot. I think when we can, I believe that when we go to our next episode, we will finally take on the gym. So we'll save right here, and we shall call it for today. Until next time, this has been Denki. Sayonara. <laughs>